as we can see, we had a big move on Bitcoin here. And this looks extremely manipulated with the volume and so forth from everything I could see and the dimensions and the movement. What I'm looking for right now is for us to get to above here, probably around the 10K level. I do not believe this is going to last. Um, I could tell by the ticks and the pricing that this looks like a setup that they just basically pushed it so they can profit and hopefully they'll get money coming in, the, the, the fear of missing out money, the FOMO money, um, to sell into them is what this really looks like. And I'm still going to target my 8K because that's longer term statistically likely. And this could be the, the impetus to loosen that up to give us that move. Um, first we'll get up here and we could go all the way up to the highs and find supply from there as well. So let's look at that. Where would that be? That would be up here. And I've seen like movement. I don't believe this is going to last. Uh, we could get a move a spike above here. And if that happens, I'm going to sell the last of my longs above this point. Uh, you know, I've seen this type of movement and this is purely manipulation. It's a little bit tricky to play because these, you know, giant Bitfinex guys have the ability to control the market to a high degree, unfortunately. And if they get together with CZ and these other exchanges, then you, you get what you get from these type of moves. But is there anything really behind them? And eh, not really. The, the real move I, I've already targeted on a time basis of what sh it's likely to occur, and it shouldn't be now. It shouldn't be this, this uh, for, yeah, until after the new year sometime. I'm not going to tell you exactly when, um, but it, I, I, high probability is we're not going to get the real move above until after the new year. So we might get a spike above here. Uh, take out any shorts and so forth, but um, we're likely going to end up going all the way back down to this 8,000 level and under. And nobody's going to expect it, so that's going to be real interesting. We'll see if we get the finally the expansion of price because everything is so uh, compressed right now that when it does go, it's going to be an explosion. Um, so we'll see. Uh, so we could get a move above here. Uh, we could also just get a move above the 10K and then collapse somewhere within this range, either above here or above the 61.8 off of our current low. And let's take a look at that. So we went down from here to here, and the 61.8 is going to be just around the, the 10,020s. Uh, so that is possible that that would occur and we kind of have like that M formation right here that you see So that is logical that we'd go back up to this level now Will we continue from here or will we fail around this area? Uh, that's the big question. I can't answer that, but what I'll do is I'll take off um, Part of my position the longs. I have two longs two ten percent longs and I'm also going to add to the shorts because I'm you know I know statistically uh, from everything that I've seen what's likely to occur and I gotta go with that so anyway that's my plan and just to let you guys know we'll see what happens but I don't believe in this move it'll be interesting to see how far they can push it right now it's likely to get it back above the 10k um, short term from here it's dicey uh, it can spike all the way up to here and uh, then sometime tomorrow or during the week, we can get a move back all the way down. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play it that way. And other than that, you guys have a great week. And I'll update you. Oh, one other thing I'll, I'll show you. I have done very well on silver, as you know. Thanks to my friends at JP Morgan. You know. <laughs> I, I'm I'm so pissed at because I, I did not want to sell the 19 and I did I sold 25% oh Jesus I mean this is one of my largest positions outside of Bitcoin but you know I'm not going to be too greedy um, I've done very well 
Uh, but uh, numbers go all the way up to uh, the 30s. This is what I'm targeting right now, all the way up to that mid-30s. Don't know what to say. This was an obvious one for me. And I told you about that for the longest period of time, so I don't have to go on. But uh, AMD, another one that I'm holding long, I also told you about that. And a few people I know of um, who tagged along and took the breakout of uh, AMD. Uh, that 76 to the 80s, the 82, uh, is very high probability. And you can see the spike. I mean, uh, fundamentals on this are tremendous. And with Intel's announcement of their delays, because they suck, they're being, they just did, you know, when tech companies go over and try to save money by not innovating and just live off the, the, the fat of the land, um, there, there gets to a point where that was a bad idea and that was a bad idea years ago and the effects of what Intel has done is now coming back to haunt them. Um, but that's good for AMD because AMD just kept going and they've made the, the Ryzen processors and they've just kept to the roadmap and they've been smoking it. Gamers love them. They're making money and they're making good, um, uh, high margin money, which is important in the tech industry on processors. And uh, they're benefiting greatly. Uh, so I could see them getting up to here and here and maybe even higher because who knows what kind of you know craziness uh, the valuations. In the market right now, you've got some interesting factors occurring, uh, mainly with the Robin Hood people and also with the Fed. The Fed has pumped so much liquidity into the market, it's just it's a sickness and the the reason the counter hedge is the reason gold is going up is because a lot of this money here is bullshit and when it collapses and goes the other way it's going to be ugly for the for the stock market and people just don't know and that's why you see gold going up and so forth because it is a counter to um, this up move in uh, the stock market and so forth and people are going to protect against that. The smart money is in the metals and uh, inflationary assets because uh, it's obvious. Go go to your supermarket and start noticing your food prices. I told you a long time ago, that's where you're going to see the first indicators. And uh, that's what occurred. Uh, so anyway, enjoy your weekend. And I'll be up later during the week and probably update you and we'll see how things have gone. But uh, this will be our interesting one right here Bitcoin and we'll see how far it goes and so forth and uh, yeah we'll go from there other than that have a great week and I'll talk to you later